Hi everyone, I have made this special video dedicated to our beloved body element as it is one of a kind and truly deserves a special treatment. In this video, we shall cover its unique relationship with browser window or viewport and especially its unique behaviors when it comes to background colors and images, which not only surprise many, but are at core of various quirks of problems that can only be solved by understanding this three-way relationship. I'll cover all the details and issues in this presentation plus coding video, but you have to bear with me until the end as we must cover some details to make sense of the later parts. If you are familiar with some concepts, you can always skip ahead using chapter navigation on the scroll bar. So without delay, let's begin. So if you ever tried adding a border to body element in an HTML document with hardly any content, you would correctly notice that it is pretty small. But try adding a background color to the body element and it would fill the entire web page. Similarly, if you work with background image repetition on an empty or few lines long HTML document, it would go beyond the body element's borders. Going further, if you go beyond basic repeat, repeat x, y, you must have experienced the weird behavior that only a single row of repeating images appear while you expected dozens of rows to fill up the entire viewport. But that happens as the content grows and then snap the background image covers the entire viewport. A similar problem can be observed with background image size with the contain value, which you can see on the screen right now. So on the left is background size contain used with a large image with no HTML content. But as the HTML content grows, uh, the image becomes more and more clear, though it's not as unpredictable as the behavior with repeat, but still this is a related problem to our topic at hand. So in this video, we shall go in detail of why this behavior occurs, why body element is special, and explore its special relationship with viewport and background. Viewport is the visible area of a web page that the user can see within their browser window. It is the window through which users view and interact with the website's content. For a larger web page, viewport is the area of web page that is visible to the user. It is a rectangle, size of which is determined by size of user device and the browser's window size. Put simply, the browser window can be called a viewport, which shows a portion of our entire web page. Next, let's formally introduce the body element. So the body element of HTML is a fundamental container that holds all visible content on the web page. This includes text, images, videos, links, and any interactive elements of a web page. It has distinct and unique relationship with the viewport that is fundamental to understand many behaviors that you would otherwise consider strange or unusual. Unless explicitly defined, the width of body element typically aligns with that of the viewport. That means that regardless of how much or little content is inside the body element, it automatically stretches to cover the entire viewport width. This ensures that horizontally the body would cover the entire visible screen area by default creating a seamless experience across devices and screen sizes. If the content of body element exceeds in width compared to viewport and can't grow in height, a scroll bar would appear and body element would be wider in width than viewport. If content is smaller than viewport width, the height of body element stays dynamic. And if you resize the viewport or the browser window, the body element would adjust accordingly. I must point out that here by default, browsers usually add an eight pixel margin, that is a gap between body and viewport around the body element, here and here. That shrinks the effective width of body element by eight plus eight equal to 16 pixels from that of the viewport width. Unlike width, which is typically equal to viewport width by default, the height of body element is dependent on its contents. If body element has little or no content, its computed height would be less than that of the viewport. The height of body element as determined by its contents can be described as its technical height. So if body element contains a single line of text, its height would be default font size multiplied by generally 1.2 to form a line height 18 pixels high, which would also become technical height of the body element if it's the only content there is. If you use Chrome browser tools or other inspect tools in your browser, you would find the technical height mentioned in computer tab. In comparison, the viewport height can be in hundreds of thousands of pixels depending on device and screen size. Unlike width, the body does not stretch to match the viewport height. 
However, there exists something which can be called a visual height of body element. Remember, body element is unique, though its technical height may be just a few dozen pixels, as shown in the, in the picture, it often appears to extend to the full height of the viewport. This illusion happens because viewport itself displays a background that is set on HTML or body element that fills the entire screen, giving appearance of body element height being equal to full viewport. While technically it's not, it's just until here. As the most basic example, if we apply a background color to the body element, like in this case I did get it blue, it would extend visually to bottom of the viewport, even if technical height of the body is only as tall as the content as shown by this dashed border. So in this picture, you can clearly see the technical height as well as the visual height. Do note with interest that body element is even smaller in width as it has eight pixels margin, gap or space around it between itself and the viewport boundary. But the background color filled the entire viewport equally in width and in height, making its visual height and width seem equal to that of the viewport. When a background color or image is applied to the body or HTML element, it typically extends to fill the viewport visually, even if technical height is limited to just a fraction of overall viewport height. This gives an impression or style that the entire screen has a consistent background, not just the body element. This has tremendous visual appeal for users to whom the viewport never looks empty, even when technical height and width of body element is limited. Body element by default, and unless modified via CSS, is a block type element. Without going into much details, block elements are HTML elements which take the entire width of their parent or container element, and their height is determined by its content. However, they have an interesting capability that you can explicitly define their height and width. Using that feature, you have the option to make the technical height of body element to forcefully match that of viewport thereby removing the distinction between technical and visible height. This is typically done using VH units of measure, which stands for viewport height. It is a CSS unit of measurement that represents a percentage of the height of viewport. So one VH is 1% 1 of viewport height and 100 VH is 100% of viewport height, which means it fills entire height of visible screen. The technical height of body element can grow with its content, so it is possible for technical height to match the visual height and even surpass it if enough content is added to the body element. When that situation comes, the viewport height remains fixed to the visible screen area, but the body element overflows. This is the technical term generally used in HTML when height of a child element exceeds that of its parent. When that happens, the browser, as default behavior, introduces a scroll bar to allow users to scroll through the extra content. If you never thought this way when using scroll bars, now is the time to dive into details. Staying focused on viewport and body at the moment, the viewport remains fixed while body element continues to grow as needed. In this situation, the viewport acts as a sliding window through which you see the visible part of body and scroll bar is used to drag this visible area behind the viewport or window. The behavior of background images in this situation becomes tricky as previously it was extending beyond the body element when its technical height was low. Now as the user scrolls the viewport past the body element using scroll handles, the background should scroll along with the rest of the content to give an impression of visual continuity. The biggest impact of technical versus visual height can be found on background images. While they can be affected in a variety of ways, the single biggest impact is with background repeat behavior. To see the impact of visual versus technical height of body element in action, we need to go to Visual Studio Code and try it out in HTML and CSS. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and do just that. All right, let's look at the problem first. So I'm going to add a 50 by 50 pixel square background image to my document, which is currently empty, as you can see. And for now, I'm going to use and inline HTML, so and inline CSS. So here we go. And we save background image colon URL is small. And I'm going to save background repeat space. 
Now, if you have uh, covered our background repeat video earlier in this background image series, you would note that background image space is supposed to repeat the image both horizontally as well as vertically, but that didn't happen. Now look what happens if I add a few lines of code. So I'm going to say A, new line, B, new line, C, new line, D, new line, and now snap. The viewport goes from a single row of repeating stars and 90% blank to completely filled with stars horizontally and vertically. Why is fifth row so special? The background repeat space algorithm works to repeat the background image with equal spacing between instances, rather than simply edge to edge, just like with repeat. And to do that, it must determine the number of image tiles by calculating how many complete instances of image can fit within the container along each axis, that is X and Y. This calculation takes into account the container's height and width, dimensions of background image, and space required to separate the images equally. So once maximum number of tiles is calculated, any remaining or leftover space along each axis is divided evenly between the tiles to provide spacing, with the goal being to achieve symmetrical and equal spacing between each instance of background image along both axes. And to maintain this balance and symmetry, the algorithm often waits until it can fit at least two complete rows or columns with necessary spacing. That is why you saw only one row initially until the container height increases enough to allow a second row with equal spacing. All right, now here's the kicker. The entire calculation is based off technical height of the body, not the visual one. So as soon as technical height of the body reaches the threshold where browser can calculate the spacing between two rows of background images, snap. The background image takes over the world, that is the entire viewport, and lives happily ever after. Do keep in mind that though this takeover of entire viewport is something that is specific to, specific to a body element, if background was, say, applied on a div element contained in the body, you would see the same threshold thing happen with the div contents as well. But once the snap occurs, the background would be applied in entire vertical area of div only, and not spread outside. In case of body element, however, as soon as any background is applicable on the entire body element, it is auto-applied to entire viewport automatically. I think by this time, the background size related problem is self-explanatory and no-brainer, but let's go over it real quick. Anyway, so I'm going to change it to background BG large, get rid of this, and change it to background size and use the value contain. So this was the effect that I showed you in the presentation and uh, uh, the reason seems obvious by now. Uh, the technical height of the body is close to zero and contain is supposed to contain the image within that element. So it is trying its best, but eventual result is very unpleasant as you can see. So. Uh, the obvious remedy, if we grow the size of the body element, with each addition to the body element technical height, the image gets more and more clear because it, it is trying to contain the background image within the technical height of the body element itself. And it is going to grow until it can span the entire width. So let me speed up the process. And then it is only going to repeat in the vertical direction. This is the maximum the image is going to grow with background size contain. The image is now as clear as your understanding. And on this happy note, we end the story of this crazy relationship between viewport, HTML body, and the background elements. If you enjoyed, Please show your love by liking and sharing this video and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much. Goodbye.